It's the second hour of the Sunday Inquisition. Tonight's game to finish the first weekend as Carlton and Port Adelaide at Docklands. The full call here, but a rare privilege now, and it is fantastic to welcome to the studio the Port Adelaide coach, Ken Hinckley, to join Stan Elves and Scott Gullen. Ken, welcome. Thanks, Jared. It's good to be here. Fantastic uh, that you've given us this time. Uh, we're still going to play highs and lows on the Inquisition and we'll dissect Richmond a little later, but we'll spend some time now uh, with this insight. It, match day, you're on the road. Um, hotels, Grand Prix on the telly, a lot of marking time, I imagine. Yeah, it is. And that's, you know, for me, an opportunity to come in here is, uh, you know, kills a bit of an hour, to be honest. You, uh, you sit around all day waiting for it's a 7.40 start. You know, it's, it's a bit later than even normal night games, so you do have a fair bit of time to fill in, but that's that's just part of it. We're okay. What sort of schedule do you put together with... Have you had your last meeting with the team? Yeah, just before I came in here, yeah. Yep. I just uh, sat through the uh, meeting with the boys at 12 o'clock and uh, we had a good chat about what, we, what we're trying to do and what we're trying to expect of each other tonight and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that. Is that very much nuts and bolts, that sort of conversation? Yeah, it's a little bit of really, you know, find find end of the stick a bit for us. It's like this is this is where it is, and this is what we expect now. And it's, it's really business time now for for the players. Certainly, they they will spend most of the afternoon, I'm sure, in in game day mode and uh, thinking a little bit about what they're trying to do. Then there's the risk that they go too far because it's too long. And but that's the chance you have to take, and you've got to expect and trust that they'll have that under control. How would you characterise the mood in that room? Is it anxious? Is it tense? Is it excited? Is it impatient? Uh, no, I think it, I think it's excitement. It's round one, you know, it's, it is a build up for, to round one, and it's you know I said during the week it's it's almost like a, a final at the start of the year. It's everyone's got everything on this game, and you know we see some results already, and you go, gee, there's a lot hangs on this one game. And you know I know last year, my first year, we we're going to play Melbourne at the MCG. It was just a massive game for us as a football club, and you know we go into round one this week playing Carlton, where we've we've been able to make a little bit of ground, but we're almost in that same point where we're playing a rival who is trying to compete for our spot. We think, and we've got to make sure we hold on tight. And what about for you? Is there a sense as I've got this now? I understand this. I've lived the rhythms of the season as a, a senior coach. Do you recognise what this day is? Yeah, I think I think you do. But it's good that, that I'm nervous. I reckon it's it's a, the way I should be. I think uh, walk, walking into the tonight's game, I'll be pretty anxious and I'll be wanting to see us do certain things well. And but that's that's the way I operate best. I reckon, and I think most coaches would be the same. You you, you live on the edge a little bit, and today's game day, and that's that's what it should be for me. Stan and Scotty. Yeah, Kenny. Um this time last year, um, you new coach, new group, putting your pressure on uh, 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 your, what can I say, your desires on the team and what you want from them, your expectations. You've gone through that season. I'm interested to know what you had to do different come the end of the year. You would have done your checks and balances, but probably a sense of, do I make sure they get back on track? Do we get ahead of ourselves and those type of things? How have you gone about that? Yeah, I think the number one thing is to make sure we. I've said all over the summer to make sure we turn back up in uh, you know in 2014. That's that's I'm I'm nervous about that because that's my job to be nervous about. I reckon Stan and uh, you know I want to make sure that we push them really hard in the pre-season. We've done that. I wanted to test them out a couple of times and see whether they were you know were they in that right frame of mind. Were they this this group that desperate to still keep on improving? And you know all the indicators I get from them is that they've been fantastic and they'll they've been ready for that. But my job is to make sure I'm on edge and that make sure that they're on edge and. Nothing's given to you in this game. You know it. It's, mm. it's a tough game to be involved with. And you know, everyone says it already. You've only got to look through all the media that gets built up now and that coming into the round one. There's a group of eight or ten sides trying to find, probably trying to fight off for, for two or three spots at, in, in the middle to above on the ladder. And that's where one of them. And, you know, we're not going to give ourselves, give our spot away easy. We're going to fight pretty hard. Having said that, you just talked about something that was interesting to me then. I hadn't thought of it until you just said that. But... Nothing's a given. Uh, I guess even your game plan and what you did last year, because other sides will go ahead, they'll do things a little bit differently. You've probably had people studying the Blues to see what they do differently go today. Are there things that you need to do to complement what you said in process last year? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we've, we've spoken openly over the, the, the break that you know, our contested ball stuff. I, look, I go back to my last game and, and you go back to your final and you go, we lost the game in contested ball and we lost the game in turnover. You know, And, and we know that and we've worked really... It, all it does was reinforce that we knew that was an issue that we had to work on and we've gone really hard on it all summer and we've made sure that we've put some, some work into those areas to try and improve. doesn't mean we'll get an instant result tonight. I think we have to learn to handle that pressure and handle those opportunities when game day is on and that's tonight. Scotty, you... You waited longer than we thought, Kent, to get the big seat. What did you learn when you sat back after it all done? I mean, was there a couple of things that you learnt that you didn't expect or...? 
things that surprised you from one year as a senior coach? I've been on record as saying no. Nothing. And I, and I don't think too much has surprised me. I've been, I suppose, as you said, I, I waited a long time. <laughs> I was uh, put in a queue and left there for a while, and uh, I was happy enough to do that. And I had a great fallback, as I've always said. I had a great job. I love my job in footy. So, but I'd been around, and, and the beauty was that I got a lot of experience. I got lots of times to see, you know, I've seen this great Geelong side come and, and become what it was. I then went up and worked with an expansion club. It's got full of young kids and all the dramas that come with, with a young team. So you got all those things, and you know, and all through that, you see all the, all the little things that happen in footy. You see, there's so many things that go on, but not so much. I don't reckon anything really surprises me. I probably, the most important lesson I got is I seen Malcolm Blight get sacked at St Kilda, and I said that day, nothing will ever surprise me in football. <laughs> and I think to today, I, I, that puts me in a pretty good spot. We touched on you know, second-year blues. It's a cliche, but it does happen. It happens to coaches. It happens to players. I mean, you've mentioned how you've, you've pretty confident. Did you, did you sit down with the players and talk about, you know, you're all excited because I'm a new coach and you've lifted for me, but then to keep the message fresh and we're going again? Yeah, I think, look, the best way you handle it is I reckon you'd be really upfront and honest, yeah. and that's what I've been like probably with the group is that these are the pitfalls, these are the things that we can fall into. You know, our job is to make sure we, we work as hard as we can. I love some, you know, Jared's article today, you see, and you know there's things that can go against you in footy, but you've just got to control the ones that we can control, and that's effort and work rate, and I think we've brought that back to the table right from the start of pre-season. So I floated the Jackster position that I think Port Adelaide is a lock to improve, a lock but you might lose your place in the competition while you do it for factors completely outside your reach. And you strike me as a man who won't get seduced by the instant gratification because you've got 12 first round giraffe picks and the model is pretty sound. What, what are your expectations for this year? Again, I think the, the key thing and you know, the expectation question is one that we get faced with a fair bit because of what we are able to do last year. But our expectation is what should be what we can control. You know, and that's the key message for me. I, I can't control, you know, an umpire decision. I can't control an injury. I can't control a bounce of the ball that we got last year. What I can control is the way we go about things, how hard we're prepared to work, and that we keep an eye on the little things at our football club and we don't take our eye off the ball. They're, the, they're my things that I can control. So I have a responsibility to make sure they're done well. And if we do them well, as I said last year, the results will be what they'll be and we'll end up where we should end up because of what we've done. But this is a development year, is it not? Notwithstanding that I don't discount you making the aid, I think you will, but the development is a priority to the results. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think we, we've started a journey 12 months ago, and, and if everyone looks at our football club 12 months ago, well, a bit longer now because we're ready to start round one, but there's a, there's a, there's a fair bit that's got to be improved to, to even make some small ground. Now, we've, we've made some ground, but we know that that's still a journey and there's a long way to still go. As you say, the development of those players, Ollie Wines, Chad Wingard, you know, even Hamish Hartlett and Travis himself as a captain and Brad Ebert, they're, you know, they're 25, 23, 23 and 20 and 19. You know, so we've got, we've got young men who have still got to do a lot of work to develop their football, and you're right, they've got a long way to go. The journey is that we want to see them develop again this year. We will, and wherever that ends up, we'll end up. I've got a little two-pronger. Um, depth pressure is is important. We know that we're, when we go on, because injuries and things can happen. Four new faces. I'll ask you to tell us a little bit about that. But also coming into the Ken Hinckley environment, what are the non-negotiables at Port Adelaide? If you want to come, if I'm a player now, I've just come in. What are the non-negotiables that I've got to deliver for you? Uh, character for me, Stan. I, I just you've got to be a good person. It, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. People say, well, what's a, what's a good person look like in football? Yeah. I say, you know, I say to my players every, nearly once a week, I reckon, I say, do the right thing, not because I'm telling you to, do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And that's what I expect of people. And, uh, you know, that's what I expect of my players, you know, and that's what they've got to bring to the football club. And that's not just getting a kick of football. That's the way they train. That's the way they treat members. That's the way they treat, you know, anyone. They just do it the right way. And because it's not, not because someone's making me, it's because it's the right thing to do. And, you know, we've got some depth in our club and you know, we've brought in White and, and Pollack who will play tonight, which we're really excited about. And we bring Impey and Cleary in for their first games. I mean, you know, it's, we just, you see some stuff over the pre-season and you know, Tommy Cleary was showing the boys some stuff of what he's been able to work, the way he's worked through his pre-season. And Jarman's come in and, uh, you know, just really fitted in really well. And look, from day one in Dubai, Jarman Impey showed the boys that he had something. You know, there's no doubt they watched him do a bit of a training drill. And you know, it's like you've been around footy a long time. You go... 
wow, that kid can actually play a bit. <laughs> and the boys, his teammates, and, and that's the best tick you want to get, mm. his teammates, I had Cassisi and Corns and go, gee, Impy shows a bit. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have record membership again this year by the feel of it. We have now, yes, already. Oh, that's amazing. Do you, you get, love that, don't you? What do you think they think? Our members? Yep. What do you reckon they're thinking about your season? I reckon Port Adelaide members are so much like me, it's not funny, and, and that's a great thing, I reckon, is that they just expect certain things from their footy team, and if you're going to bring them to the table, we're going to jump on and help you, and that's what they've done so far. They, they say effort and energy and work rate and hard footy is what Port Adelaide stand for, and our members know that, and if you, if you guarantee me we're going to turn up and play those sorts of football we're going to come and jump on with you. And, and our members have been amazing. I mean, we are we are a suburban footy club and we're at 46,000 members somewhere now, which is an incredible number. We, we've got, I think, higher membership than to my old club, Geelong, who have won three premierships, been in four grand finals. It's just a great credit to the Port Adelaide family. They're just fantastic. Now, a relationship that intrigues me, Ken, knowing you, Kochi. He would be the different spectrum to what you are, but you seem to be a match made in heaven and it worked. Everything you two touch was gold. Tell us about you and Kochi. Oh, look, we do. We get on pretty well. As you say, we're, we're quite different. I, I'd, I'd be the furthest person from Sunrise. <laughs> and But we have really similar beliefs in the way we want to do things. you know. And he's the same. He said, get me good people. If you get bring, bring good people and we'll get a good organisation. And I think that's exactly the way we try to operate. We want to make sure that whoever we bring to our club, they're good people and they love being at Port. They enjoy coming to work. One of his key things he first said was, I want coming to work at Port Adelaide to be fun. It's a, it's a great footy club to be involved with at the moment and we've just got to make sure that we take the scoreboard out of what we behave like when we're at the club and that's really important for a footy club. How down was this club? I mean, like you said, it's a proud one. We know over here how it's history, but it had had, you know, won premierships over here and then it had fallen off the face. I mean, what was it like going in there? Uh, look, there's the list, if we just purely talk about the football yeah. team and the football list, the list wasn't in a bad way at all. Matty had done you know, some really good stuff mm. and done some great work to, as you said, you talk about some of the draft picks and the, and the recruiters had put some people together. There was, but they were, they were in that stage. They really were developing. They were looking for some leadership. There's no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, and uh, they just needed to refresh their whole attitude, I think, to what they expected a football club to look like. Travis has been a you know, first-class captain as the way he wants to, mm. to, the club to play like. So you know, there's lots of things that work. And then you get a bloke like Dom, who Dom Cassisi, who's been a great captain in such tough times at a footy club. Mm. And uh, you know, the way he, he behaves now and the way he acts, you just know that there's people in the footy club are pretty strong. Ken Hinckley is our guest on the Sunday Inquisition, the Port Adelaide coach. Uh, Kosh has written a great piece in the ABC Footy magazine, which uh, is the sort of the companion to the season for our broadcasts. And He's very vivid about the last night. Do, you're up at halftime against Geelong in the semi-final. Does that much bother you? Has that lived with you right through the off-season? Yep, yeah, it drives me crazy. And, uh, you know, I, I take a fair bit of responsibility for it. I, I know myself that uh, I didn't follow through on my gut feel on that night. And uh, as a coach, I reckon it's the most powerful thing you have is that your gut has got to be a pretty controlling factor on game day. And I went safe against a side that I knew I should have went after. And uh, unfortunately, that's that's what happened. And that's probably drives me a bit crazy there, to be honest. So I, I felt I said as soon as I went into the halftime break to Richo, I said, I need to tell these boys to go again and go after them. And in fact, I didn't do that. I sort of sat back and made them prepare a little bit more for the Geelong power surge that was going to come. And, and we didn't react the right way because I reckon the message I gave them. So my responsibility, I've got to fix that. Were there uh, mechanics to that as well as... And the emotion of it were there mechanical things on the ground that you would yeah. like your time over with? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we set up for for stuff that was uh, in reference to what Geelong were going to do, and in, in fact, we should have set up for for more stuff that we should have done and could have done, and we had the ability to do. So that was that was the part that I was probably most disappointed in. So how have you dealt with that? Other than clearly stewing on it, yeah. how have you dealt with that not, over the last five months? Not well, because I don't want to lose. I didn't want to lose. And, uh, you know, regardless of what game it was, and it was a final, but I don't like losing. And uh, I don't want to be, you know, leaving something in the bag that I perhaps shouldn't have. And that's, that's what it felt like at the end of that game. I felt like the boys gave me everything, and I probably didn't give them everything back. So that's the way it goes. It's a lonely existence that I'm sure only a few who have done it and Stan will have empathy with this. Do you have someone outside of football who you would i don't know pour your heart out to or or get counsel from about how not to let it consume you 
No, not really. Other than Donna and my family, my kids, I, I do. I spend lots of time. They they keep me pretty level and they make me understand certain things. And you know, and and as we've seen, I heard Ross talk about Dean this week. And there's there's a lot lot worse things going on. But my job is pretty crucial to what I want to to stand for. And uh, you know, and uh, sometimes it can it can weigh you down. And I'm sure this job is is a really stressful job. But at the moment, I love every moment. I hope I never get to the point where I don't like doing what I do. Does it sound familiar, Stan? Oh, <laughs> of course it does. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I mean, that's a reality. Sometimes people uh, don't uh, understand that coaches actually are human beings, and yeah. uh, and and they bring all the things. We've got our hopes and our dreams, and aspirations. But we've also got our fears and it, and other <laughs> things that go with it. And we've got to be able to cope with them. And sometimes uh, that the reality is that. Uh, I think you need somebody to be able to pour it out to, and I think family is best in that situation because if you don't and you bottle it up within you, it can start to affect everything else you do. Yeah. So that's important. Can I just change the subject a little bit here, if I may? And I know you probably, as a coach, don't individualise, but there's a player in your side that teases me. Uh-huh. His name's John Butcher. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I keep looking at thinking, oh, if this kid can get his body right, and something, he, he could do something. Where, where's he at? Has he had a good pre-season? Is he ready to go? Yeah, look, he has, Stan. He's had, a, he's had his best pre-season at Port Adelaide, there's no doubt, and uh, doesn't guarantee him anything, but it gives him a chance, I think, if you've mm. worked pretty hard. You know, John John has to deal with lots of pressure. You know, he, we know about his kick, and I've, I said publicly after our NAB Cup against Essendon, I reckon the best way for John to handle that is to understand that, as I said that night, it's in his bag, it's in his kit. He's going to bring out a bad kick every now and then, and it's going to go off the side of the boot, and we're going to crowd, and everyone else is going to go, oh, dear. Well, as long as John can live live with that moment and move on to the next one, he'll he'll be fine. He's got some stuff that we know will make us a better football side, but he also has a body that's challenged him. There's no doubt about that. And uh, you know, he's got a long way to Jared's question before. You know, this season is a bad improvement. Well, it's for John more than anyone. It's a bad improvement again. You know, he hasn't had a chance to play consistent football. Hopefully, he has a really good run at it, and, and we get to see some of the talent that he's got. Can we talk about today? Uh, you've said you've had that last meeting for the time being and you see the players on the bus or at the yep. ground. Um, is all your planning done? Yep. Do you have your magnet board done? Yes. When did you settle on match-ups and those sorts of things? Uh, about Thursday, uh, which is, uh, you know, we had because we had a long week leading into this uh, into this game, we, uh, we had a chat Tuesday. We talked about, obviously, some key players for Carlton, what they might do, what we might do which players are probably going to look at us and, and then try and come up with the right matchups that we want. And we certainly did that by basically Wednesday night. We had a good chat as a group, and on Wednesday night I've gone, well, I've got to give the boys some clarity of the match committee as much as anything. This is what we've got to do, and this is what we're going to go with. And hopefully they work. When Do you leave that all alone for the next few hours? Because if you got it out, I'm a tinkerer. I'd be, oh, no, maybe I'll do this and this. Do you have to sort of cast that aside for the time being? Yeah, you got to lock it in. you just got to, you got to let it play now. You've got to let it unfold a little bit because our next move is probably three or four minutes into the game, to be fair. It's what's going on, you know, and what's it look like, you know, and, and it goes without saying that our starts in the last two weeks haven't been great. So for me, the first three or four minutes is going to be pretty important for the way we, we look and then hopefully not make too much of a change to that. How much of the first game of the season, which is peculiar, is about you and the way you want Port Adelaide to play and how much of it is about second guessing what Carlton's going to do and combating that I'd like to think it's 90% about us that's what I I think that's what I I, I think every week it's about what we've got to do and and how well we can do it the the challenge is and Mick would be saying the same thing it's about what we've got to do the challenge is I've got to try and break Mick from some of his thoughts and he's going to try and break me from some of my thoughts and and the arm wrestle will go on a little bit but what really happens is the players change the thoughts and uh, we don't really have that big of input, but we, we think we do. When you talk to them for the last time before you send them out, will that be the continuation of the conversation you had with them at the end of the semi-final night or will it be something completely afresh? Uh, no, it'll, it'll be a combination of what we've tried to grow in the summer and, and to what I expect tonight. That's what it'll be, and uh, you know, so I can't separate the two. We want, we want as a football club to achieve the absolute highest we possibly can, and that means we have to be able to deal with what's going on and deal with what's coming. Now, state of the nation, you know, there's been rules tinkering and change. What are you expecting this year from the bench? You know, the interchange, all those rotate, everything that's been tinkered with. What do you see being the thing this year in football? Oh, I don't think there'll be too much, no. Scott. I reckon we've left it alone pretty much. Uh, the only the, the challenge for us is one runner. It is a little bit of a challenge as a coach. 
Because young guys, I mean, who needs to be told what to do? The young, is it younger the team, obviously? Is it that simple? Well, I'm sure Clarko can sit there and, and be pretty comfortable that his group as mature yeah. as they are can get most things done. You know, And, and for us, we, we probably are a little bit more hands-on just yet because we are still developing that side. Mm-hmm. So we, we're a bit more hands-on. And, and when you've got rotations going on and there's a cap on rotations and you've got to be careful you're not going too far there so are you using your runner for rotations at the end of the quarter or are you using for for coaching and for as far as getting a message on what the coach wants to have happen so i think that one thing will be interesting for us i must say in the nab cup because we've been in two regional places we haven't had great communication so we mm. we probably haven't missed it but at the eddie had game against Essen and you sense that there was a times where you wanted to get a bit more of a message out there a bit quicker did you used to always have the runners on and off, you know, they would never sit next to each other. Were you a, are you a lot of message type coach or? Uh, not really. I don't, I don't think so. But, you know, last year we had uh, Andrew Rogers and, and Tyson Edwards doing it. Tyson would probably <laughs> say that I, perhaps I am. I, look, there's no doubt. And I know why they, you know, one of the reasons they changed it was to, to stop on-field coaching. There's, there's no doubt about yeah. that. And, uh, you know, when I've got a, a, a runner like Tyson Edwards with his knowledge of our game plan and style, that it's really important for us for Tyson to spend some time out there when the moments get really tight now that's if you give me that opportunity I'm going to take it yep. <laughs> sorry have you got good on field leaders I think Ken what you're alluding to here is that um, if confusion occurs what happens people go away from the things they need to do they start to get worried about what happens yeah. are you comfortable that you've got enough spread throughout the field uh, that, that what happens that you don't become too reactionary and everybody's worrying about everything else and, and can concentrate on what they need to do? We're a work in progress, Stan. There's no doubt about that. I think we've still got a fair way to go. But you know, we've actually spent a lot of time helping our leaders this year, more than any other time they've been in football at, at other clubs and in a different way with what we're trying to help them, giving them some, some tools that will allow them to act and behave in, in the game when it's get it, at its most important times and uh, how they do that. So they've been really good. They're taking that on board. And they've, you know, we've, as I said, I've just been in that meeting today and part of the message from Travis is hey, we want to remember boys this is how we're gonna gonna be and what we're gonna do. So do that now's great. Lunchtime on mm. Sunday afternoon, but at, <laughs> at quarter to eight tonight when someone's trying to knock his block off it might be a bit harder. <laughs> and we bounced around at this time last year, uh, who are Port Adelaide's A graders? And I know you are asking us that question, yep. but I would fold that question back on you now. Now that you've had them for a year and seen the development across your group, who who's Port Adelaide's A graders? I suppose it's, I, I want to answer the question this way. I want to say I've got an A-grade squad. That's what I think I've got. I've got an A-grade squad of people, of character. That's, that's for me, the, the most single important thing. If we then take it off and we go back to purely on football talent and what they're capable of doing, you know, there's a significant number there now that we, we would like to think people would rate as elite players in the competition. And, and I can start at Boak and Ebert and Hartlett and, you know, and then obviously we put Wingard, people like that in it. But people like Trengo, for me, Jonas is a player that people don't even, almost don't mention. He's yep. an elite player for us. You know, so if we want to talk who's valuable and really important players we don't want to do without, you know, and Carlisle's not on the side tonight, another one of those players, Westhoff. I mean, gee, when you, when you go to a footy club, you get an appreciation that's totally different than when you live <laughs> outside it. Justin Westhoff is a star of our game, and I, he's a star bloke, but, uh, you know, I love the fact what he does. And I haven't touched on Schultz, you know, there's so many. When you get involved with them, I'll defend them. Yep. There's no <laughs> doubt. I'll, I'll call all of them A graders. <laughs> but as I said, the most important thing, I've got an A grade squad, and that's what I love about them. They give me their, they give me their heart, and, uh, you know, hopefully I, in return, do the same back to them. Okay, biggest questions. Have you got the defender who's ready to go and, in your mind, handle the most damaging forwards in the competition? Yeah, I think we've got a couple. I think there's no doubt. I mean, we've, we've, as I said, I've mentioned Jonas before, but Trengo's really important. Trengo's final series last year, uh, he, you know, we played Collingwood and uh, you know, played Reed, and then we played Geelong and he played Pods Yardley. He done them cold, to be fair, you know, and that's, that's not disrespecting the other two boys. Jackson had really big games for us. Carlisle did the same. So, But they're young. You know, they, they haven't lived in those moments that often. They haven't had to do, deal with that that well. So, And as a group, I think, Everyone says that we've got the key defenders, but we, we think as a back six, which our group is big, it's bigger than the back six, but the back six that take the, the field tonight, it's about how they work together, you know, and you know, I heard, I think Stephen May may have said something last night, we played as a back six, that's a young side, every side's trying to play as a back six, we, we watch Ross's side play and they're so good, so well drilled as a back six, they help each other out, so we've, we've got the, the team that can actually handle that, no problems. Matthew Loby, uh, no one's missed him, <clears throat> but his status might soar. Is he good enough to be one of the best ruckmen in the game? 
Yeah, yeah. There's, he's improvement in one year. Last year, and that's typical, as you know, Stan, the, the Ruckman, they, they do come at a, at a later stage, and, and, and Loeb's has certainly done that. You know, he led our tackles by 30 last year. He's, he's, a, he's in our leadership group now. So we rate him, obviously, really high. I didn't mention him before, and you talk about our elite, there's elite players. So he's one that's really valuable to us, there's no doubt, and we can't afford for him anything to go wrong, probably, with Loeb's, to be fair. But, uh, yeah, now he's a, he's a player that he should, again, elevate himself in the competition. And Schultz, I think Schultz is a much-admired player now. To get that second prong for him, do you almost owe it to him to to get that? I mean, you want him to get the ball, but the reliance on him is he needs help. Uh, ideally, we'd uh, him and him and Westy together. When ideally, we would have a John Butcher type player or whoever that is, and or, or another big ruck that can go down there and play the the position that helps out. Schultz, he he, he just a great player. The unfortunate part about Schultz is every time I watch him play, I think he's going to get hurt because he's fearless in the way he goes yep. about it. And, uh, you know, but when when we're having a set shot of goal, I hope it's in Schultz's hands. That's what I do hope. But, uh, you know, he's, he's a great player for us. Ken Hinckley, our guest on the Sunday Inquisition. Um, the, have you watched the footy this weekend? Yep. What Can't have you seen? It. What have you seen? I've seen the uh, the arrival of the national competition. I've seen two junior sides who had been, and have been involved with one for a little bit of the time. I've seen them finally say we're we're coming and we're here and you know and, and you get a bit scared to be honest you look at them and, you, and I hear the comments yesterday there's 27 first round draft picks at the Giants and and I know the quality of the the, the Suns boys firsthand so you just it's good for footy it's great for great for the competition and I'm sure the AFL will be very pleased that with the results but uh, you know I just think and then we've seen how far you've got to go on Friday night I reckon with Frio and uh, you know the way they play and the pressure they bring and you know, it's a pretty brutal game when you watch them play. We played them once over the last year over in, in, in Fremantle. And seriously, it was the game we were out of our depth. We were seriously out of our depth with the pressure they put on us. Did you see a different Fremantle on Friday night? Uh, I think everyone's probably wanting to say yes because they scored a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more attacking through the middle. But, you know, I, I don't know, was that just the game? Let's, let's, let's just wait a little bit and see what it looks like. Ross will have a style. Ross won't change his style. I know Ross... And he'll be pretty strong on what his style of football looks like, and he'll back it in, and that's what you've got to do as a coach. Everyone says it's just round one, but round one last year was so important for you. I mean, it can set up momentum like you guys showed, and it can you know, dig holes for teams. Yeah, it's it's what it is. It's unfortunate, but there is sides who, you know, round one can, you know, as you say, can, can help you get a little tiny bit of belief. That's probably on the positive. You can get a little bit more that side. a little Only a little bit, I reckon, on the positive. On the negative, I think there's a... It can. There's, there can be a significant downer for, for sides, I reckon, because you, you work so hard to get it right. You sell hope right through the summer and you want it to be a little bit more on round one. But, you know, I'm sure there's been sides that have had bad <laughs> round ones that have had great seasons. And, uh, you know, I hope we have a good round one and we have a great season. <laughs> Last time was a nail-biter. One point. What do you got to do to get on the ledger your way? Uh, play four quarters, Stan, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we led that game reasonably well the first time we played them at Eddie had they were much better than us they the scoreboard flattered us probably but over there at, at Port in round 23 we we had the game where we needed it probably but Carlton were they threw a bit at us and we just didn't cope with it hopefully we uh, we cope with it a bit better tonight for four quarters we, we that's what you know back to your very early question that's us as a footy club we're uh, we're still not quite at that full four quarter game yet and uh, you know I don't want to use Essex but we do have moments in games where we don't control the momentum as well when it's going against us as we need to and that's that's what it is because it's always momentum in football either for or against our problem is not controlling it enough when it's going against us Stan will sit there and offer the expert comments tonight if you were to say to him you could judge us on x y and z and you'll know whether I'm happy or cranky what what would be x y and z in that scenario you see us smacking in. You'll, you'll see us going hard at the ball and, you know, playing contested football. And, you know, I would really like you to be able to say under pressure, they, they handled the they handled the heat. And that's what I'd really like. And that's with ball use. That's with how we tackle, you know, because you, under pressure, you do sloppy things, whether you've got the ball or you haven't got the ball. So we give sloppy free kicks away. But I think under for us, if you can see us really making a, you know, a really strong game of it, because Carlton's going to give us that opportunity. They're a really contested side football. Mick plays... You know, coaches that way, he's got big bodies in there, so we're going to have to welcome that contest. If you see us doing that and then handling the pressure coming out of that contest is what's really important for us. Do you, um, we all sort of check into football season and then we check out in October. That won't quite be the life of the coach, but 
does it become sort of acutely aware of everything else is on hold now uh, and we'll see in October? Do, do, do you obsess about it? Does it take over your, your being? Yes, yep. <laughs> totally. It's it's life. It's everything I do. It's you know it gets in the way of everything I do, and uh, and I love the fact that it does. But uh, you know I know sometimes you've got to be able to drop it and leave it away. But you just can't. You know, stand. You know you just can't walk away for one minute when you're you're doing this job. And it's just it's there, and you know it's a great job, and we're lucky to get it. But there's a fair bit of pressure that comes with it. And uh, you know Phil Walsh is one that's been really good for us for, for me particularly. Is that he you know he often talks about. No one can quite, I don't reckon, quite understand the pressure that sometimes comes in, in this job. And, uh, you know, that's pressure you put on yourself. It's pressure everyone else puts on you. It's pressure I love being a part of. With Alan Richardson, I mean, that that <laughs> that happened out of the blue. But you were very, given what you'd went through, you were very supportive and kept going, come on, Richo, put your hand up. Uh, tell us how that all panned out. Yeah, well, that's, you know, as you know, Scotty, you know well that uh, I, I'd been through quite a bit of that. And, and for Richo... If he wanted to be a coach, there wasn't wasn't no chance that I was going to be standing in the way of that. It was yeah. I was going to encourage that. Not you know those conversations I said to him quite a bit in the back half of the year because we'd done some pretty good things obviously as a football club and we were getting recognised for doing some good things and and Richo was a, a massive part of that and and the job started to open up. I said mate, if you ever want to go and at that stage he was pretty strong on no look I'm I've made a decision mm. I'm, I'm locking in this way but then there comes a time when you know, obviously there comes a point where you go, this job's for you to do if you want to do it. Yeah. And that's that's what happens, I reckon. And, and you go, well, now there's a different question. <laughs> and Richo and I, as we, we often joke, the only time we ever met was walking in and out of um, job interviews. <laughs> <laughs> and um, before that, we, we hardly ever, we hardly would have spoken, but we spent plenty of time walking past each other at those points. But, uh, you know, you have to take it. You have to have a go at it. And Richo will be great for the Saints. How much did it throw you guys out there? I mean, he was such a key part and then, I know, snaked into November or whatever it was, or were you able to sort of manage it? Oh, I know there's timing was the problem, the, the issue yeah. that we had, and, you know, we would never stand in the way of anyone. But when you're planning your whole pre-season, and, and Richo's a big part of that, yeah. you know, it's a disruption. That's what it was. It was a disruption, but it wasn't it wasn't the major problem for us. We had just had to keep working. We had Phil had already come back to the club, so we had some real experience come back as far as um, tactical stuff, which Richo provided a lot of. But uh, then it was more about getting that person in control who would manage and develop the coaches. And, you know, that was a, a position we could sit on. Once pre-season starts, you, you, you're almost on autopilot through that mm. first four or the six weeks. So we, we were okay. And then gee, we, we were lucky that we got got a high-class person in Sean Hart come to the footy club. So, you know, we, Rich will be doing great things for some Saints and we just hope that uh, he does really well. But Sean's going to be doing some fantastic stuff for us too. Well, Kenny, it's been a splendid insight, and we're indebted to you. Uh, do you know Scotty left the Port Adelaide out of the eight? Oh, um, did I mention not to mention that? <laughs> I'm not sure if people know, but Scotty occasionally will check in on me, with me with uh, what I think of his tips. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a good phone call last week, let's just say that. And Scotty's sometimes got some really poor tips. <laughs> we're going to talk about that in the highs and lows. We're <laughs> Uh, we wish you all the very best for tonight and for the season in its total. Um, it was a fascination last year, Port Adelaide, which we all loved. And hopefully you can take us on a journey again. We'll be trying pretty hard. Ken Hinckley with us on the Sunday Inquisition, the coach of Port Adelaide. We'll resume the rest of the Inquisition in a moment.